It's Najma Karami. I um, was a graduate of GW School of Public Health in 2012, and I'm here to share some reasons to be grateful in terms of research and science-backed evidence, as well as self-care strategies. And I'm more than happy to uh, share my books with you all, which I will share in this talk. Um, I am the founder of a startup called Gratitude Circle. Uh, up there. And so I'm so glad to be able to share this with you. Um, and I'll go ahead and introduce a little bit more of myself with the slides, but that's just a short intro. Okay, so I'd like to talk a little bit about why gratitude matters. So a little story to kick us off. Um, recently, I mentioned I was an, I, I became an author this year, which is really cool. Uh, and I was recently out at Barnes and Noble doing a signing a couple months ago. And the story goes like this. There is a, a lady who is, um, you know, kind of passing by and I noticed that she was smiling and I was like, okay, wow. And she, she says, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to come visit you in just a minute. And I was looking for people to talk to about my books and all of that. I wanted to share it with them. Uh, and they knew at least this lady, I, I'm assuming she knew that my books were about gratitude and self-care. And so she actually, she passes by, she smiles, she says, I'm going to come talk to you, you know, and I was so happy that she actually acknowledged that. Um, and then a few hours later, I was there for about three hours. She walks by again and she's like, oh, I'm going to come talk to you. Don't worry. And she smiled again and she sounded confident in that she would actually come talk to me. Um, and she never actually came. So what, what the story actually told me was that in terms of what we see about gratitude and self-care, we tend to put it off. Um, and I know for most of us, when we think about self-care or sharing a gratitude practice for ourselves, we think that it can be helpful and we try to actually um, make it an objective in our daily routine, but it's very difficult. And sometimes we actually don't get to it. Uh, like that lady um, who wanted to talk to me about it, but never did. Um, so in this talk, I want to convince you all to actually um, use gratitude in your daily lives as well as self-care strategies. It is super important. After COVID, we all know that mental health has taken a toll on our lives um, because a lot of people have experienced anxiety during this time, depression, etc. A lot of a lot of things have come up: um, grief, uh, trauma isolation, loneliness, it's everywhere. So in this talk, I want to share why gratitude and self-care are so important and uh, a little bit from my books about these as well. My name is Najma again, and I'm the founder of the startup Gratitude Circle. It is a, a actually just won the award for best positive lifestyle platform in the U.S. for 2022. And I'm so proud of that. Um, as well, I'm a public health expert by background, um, and I'm also the author of a children's book and a nonfiction self-improvement book um, called A Spoonful of Gratitude. A little bit more about my books later um, and a few excerpts as well. Um, I've made contributions to Psychology Today, Entrepreneur Magazine, Huffington Post, peer-reviewed journals, and much more. Um, and I am so glad that we just recently launched the Gratitude Circle Hotline thanking frontline workers. And it's going well, you guys. Uh, these frontline workers in COVID have tremendously uh, impacted our lives by continuing the daily ins and outs of what we do, including everything from you know, health services to um, teachers to uh, grocery store workers, it's everywhere. And I'm trying to desperately thank them. If you guys wanna visit the hotline, uh, I'll share more about that in the notes below. So be on the lookout for that. And I hope you can check us out at the hotline. So a little bit about how gratitude fits in into mental health. And it's very simple. So in terms of uh, motivation, 
When we look at gratitude and motivation, it's very interesting because the same region of the brain is activated via motivation and gratitude. So this area, which you may or may not have heard of, is called the medial prefrontal cortex or MPFC. Now, when they uh, discuss this in the research, you'll see that motivation and gratitude actually stimulate this part of the brain. So we're seeing a lot of overlaps. And if you have more gratitude, the idea is that you'll have more motivation for your daily routines. This is something that we all need, right? Because we're trying to you know, study, we're trying to um, work at our jobs. It's so critical. And a lot of people always feel there's a lack of motivation. So if we build in that gratitude uh, mindset, we could definitely actually activate that part of the brain, strengthen that area so we could actually be more motivated. Um, in terms of a uh, gateway to positive feelings. Um, so if you practice gratitude for at least two to eight weeks, and I'll share more about a gratitude practice in a, in a minute, it is likely that you will experience increased positive emotions, including interest, excitement, joy, and pride. So um, this connects back to this whole gateway notion, which maybe you guys are familiar with, maybe you're not. But when we use gratitude in our minds, uh, this triggers these other positive feelings, which I just explained. And so if you want to increase the positive, you know, be on that plus side versus the minus side, you you definitely want to have that uh, gratitude framework in your head. Try to use those gratitude uh, perspectives, um, really hone in on that, and you'll experience greater positive feelings. And the trick is to practice this for at least two to eight weeks, right? That might be the key for some of you who are thinking, well, how can I actually build this in? And uh, how long do I have to do it, really? So for at least two to eight weeks, you know, um, use a gratitude practice. And again, I'll share more on a tip on how to do that in a second or in, 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 a, in a, one of the next slides. But definitely try to keep it up for that two to eight weeks. And you'll notice, you know, a little bit more. Eventually, if it becomes a mindset, you guys will definitely benefit a lot in terms of all the good things that come with gratitude. And there's a whole host of them. Um, additionally, gratitude helps build good memories. So uh, this is very interesting. I think a lot of us, everyone can relate because, you know, we all have good memories and we also have bad memories. So the bad memories, um, they tend to stick out, right? Because they have these very uh, vivid moments and or vivid uh, uh, snapshots in our minds. And so what gratitude has been shown to do is actually help us rethink or reframe you know, a situation in the past in a more positive light. So um, when we think about someone who we may have lost or uh, perhaps maybe some very traumatic event, the loss of a job, et cetera, we want to reframe this. And with gratitude, um, fMRI studies show that gratitude strengthens the ability to regulate emotions, specifically focusing on specific emotions to rethink, rethink or reframe a situation in a more positive light. So at the same time, that first part, it also helps focus on specific emotions. You know, we don't always process what we're feeling. So if we use gratitude, we're able to probably focus on what, what that emotion is at the current, at the current time. Um, the amygdala is activity under the limbic system responsible for processing emotions and memories seems to be positively impacted. So again, this is based on peer-reviewed research that I have um, looked at. And so this amygdala in terms of emotion and memories, when this positive impact comes, we're helping ourselves reframe that trauma, reframe that grief, and actually build, um, uh, not necessarily make those good memories, but make them something more, uh, become more less traumatic and more positive. And so that will help us in terms of the future because we can build more good memories instead of focusing on the past, which a lot of us, you know, we, we can always do and that's not helpful. So here's a quote by John Baptiste Masseau, who's a famous deaf educator, and it's very poignant. It says, gratitude is the memory of the heart. So when we talk about gratitude, uh, Jean Baptiste, he's a uh, obviously very um, poignant in describing it, and it really speaks for itself. So um, gratitude is something that we're still researching, but for centuries, people have understood its significance. And um, this is one of the ways that it's interpreted by someone who is very famous.
So now a little bit about self-care strategies. Now we talked about the gratitude mindset, which is really important. So with the gratitude mindset, a practice that you guys can actually implement is called the stop, look, go method. So in terms of um, where I found this, so this is from a TED talk by uh, uh, a brother, uh, David Steindl Rast, um, I believe it was in like 2011, roughly. And so he talks about the stop, look, go method. And what it is, is basically just in your environment, you want to take a pause, you stop, and then you look around you, and using your senses, you figure out, okay, am I grateful for this uh, pen? Am I grateful for a cup of water? Am I grateful for a book? Uh, and you think about why you're grateful for it, and you savor that as you look around, and then you soak it in that's the gratitude feeling and then you go you go with the rest of your day you just continue onwards so this stop look go method is very effective i have tried it many times um and it just helps soak in that like goodness and that positivity that comes from gratitude so why is this helpful uh because we're so rushed in our daily lives that we don't actually know how to use gratitude maybe a journal sounds too dry or too difficult or too much time. So this stop look go method takes literally like a minute and it really, really helps solidify that that perspective, that thinking, which we all need. Um, and uh, additionally, if you guys are in nature, which is very critical, if you guys are outside doing a walk or something and you actually um, use the stop look go method, it can actually be even more effective, I would say, because in nature, our senses are heightened. So when the senses are heightened, you actually get more of that. You soak in more of that feeling, I think. And so um, those senses really respond to the stop look go method even more, I would say. So that's gratitude mindset. Another key feature is listening to your body, quote unquote. So when we listen to our bodies, what does that mean? Uh, we want to do this, essentially. We want to feel healthy things, what is good, right? The healthy things, quote unquote, and it really should feel healthy. So with diet, um, how we consume our media, how we consume our, you know, videos, TVs, or how we consume things in general, you kind of have to listen to your body in terms of putting whatever's healthiest into you. So this takes some discipline, but if you actually get the hang of this, which is not that difficult, you'll help yourself with your with your uh, weight, any weight issues, with sleeping patterns, with exercise, which is the next thing I'll talk about, with uh, relationships, all of these things. When we're more in tune with ourselves, it really helps with self-care. Um, physical exercise, yes, it definitely helps a lot. Physical exercise is super critical. It's like the grease of the body. When, when the body is using physical exercise for um, a practice of self-care, we're actually, um, we're making the body basically function better like a car. You know, you have the oil, it's functioning better. Without physical exercise and by sitting all day, you guys, I know it sounds difficult to try get out, but if you get out, it will definitely help with self-care and it has been proven in the research time and time again. Um, as well, supportive relationships. Um, supportive relationships means everyone from friends to coworkers to grandparents to um, you know anyone in your life, uh, significant other, very, very much people who we need in our lives um, in terms of feeling more uh, positive, more able to do things. So, um, Self-care strategies circle around supportive relationships or are based on that as well in our lives. And I, I implore you to actually um, really consider who, how you feel supported by other people and um, try to invest in those relationships to make them feel more supportive if they're with the right people. Um, finally, we talked about this a little bit, but um, again, letting go of the past is very critical and the gratitude mindset helps with that. Um, and I'll read a little bit more. Uh, my book talks about this a little bit more, but we all have this tendency to kind of cling to things that we wanted to go well. We never happened. You know, for a lot of us, things don't go well, most of us. So um, the way we plan them, at least not go well, but the way we plan them, it doesn't happen. So we got to figure out how to let go of the past. And this gratitude mindset really helps with that, with the reframing and a more positive light.
So thank you for um, GW Integrative um, Medicine for allowing me to share about gratitude and self-care strategies. Um, we are Gratitude Circle. My startup is on Facebook and Instagram at G-R-A-T Circle. Um, that's the handle. And um, this is a little like a page spread from my book, Self-Care with Ted and Friends. It's my children's book that came out this year, as well as my non-fiction uh, self-improvement book, A Spoonful of Gratitude, Tips to Reduce Stress and Enjoy Life to the Fullest. Um, both books came out this year, and I'm super happy to have them out. And actually in many counties and libraries across the U.S. as well as in New Zealand. And that's a picture of me. Um, so here's an excerpt from my book, um, A Spoonful of Gratitude. So this is really uh, important. I'm just going to read it, actually. Um, when going through hard times or even in good times, a grateful perspective is key. According to Dr. Robert Emmons, a leading researcher on gratitude, in the face of brokenness, gratitude has the power to heal. In the face of despair, gratitude has the power to bring hope. In other words, gratitude can help us cope with hard times. As a country, if we can face the novel coronavirus together, we can practice gratitude together as a nation. A vision of gratitude is key to surviving and thriving day in and day out. Compare where we are now to a year ago. Traveling was easy. Going out was simple. Crowds were no issue. We can be grateful today for the opportunity to have loved ones in our lives, friends, others to count on, or if nothing else, for the simple joys of walking and eating, which for most of us have not been affected. Hard times call for gratitude. But then why do we easily forget gratitude? According to Dr. Emmons, when times are good, people take prosperity for granted and begin to believe that they are invulnerable. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, one of the reasons at the end why we don't really practice gratitude. We think we're invulnerable, right? And so if we think this way, it cannot lead to even more flourishment, even more good times, which is we all, what we all want. But we need to keep that in mind and work towards those positive stress reducers. Another excerpt, a 2019 study on gratitude and self-compassion in the journal Mindfulness found that both of these facets of mindfulness um, enhance psychological well-being. The Italian study looked at roughly 500 respondents, first asking them whether they meditated or not. Measures of mindfulness, self-compassion, gratitude, and psychological well-being were determined in both groups, subsequently using professional scales and questionnaires. Uh, the study results show that those who practiced meditation displayed greater dispositional mindfulness, gratitude, and self-compassion. Study also found that gratitude specifically was, quote, associated with positive relations with others, self-acceptance, environmental mastery, personal growth, and purpose in life. So uh, I love that last one with purpose in life. With gratitude, we can reflect on like most of our daily experiences to the point where we become so purposeful. Um, and uh, it just really exudes out in all of our like, mm, our positivity really exudes out. And so that purpose becomes even richer and finer in figuring out what our gift is and how we contribute to society. Here's a page spread from um, my children's book, which uh, in this page spread, we talk about gratitude. Um, it is quite a lovely illustration by Maria Ballerin. My children's book is called Self-Care with Ted and Friends. Um, and it is uh, available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Target, um, Walmart, et cetera.com. Um, and it is very beautiful. Uh, Maria Ballerin again illustrated this. So again, Thank you for listening today. Um, I appreciate your time so much, you guys. And I want you to remember to not like bringing it full circle to that beginning. Don't let self-care or gratitude out of your sight. Tackle it. Okay. Use those stop, let go methods. Use them in nature. Use them wherever you can, as well as all the self-care strategies. And of course, check out the books. Um, they will help you even more, um, especially for little ones who are learning about self-care. And thank you so much to GW as well. I appreciate it. Thank you, Najma. We're so glad that you took the time to do this with us. No problem, Janet. Thank you so much for having me.